and welcome to a brief introduction to logging into your employee self-service portal. My name is Allison and I'll be going through the um, details today on how to log into your employee portal. If this is your first time accessing our web website, welcome. We hope that you find it to be easy to navigate and of course helpful in whatever regard that you're looking for for information. If you do run into anything that you maybe need further assistance on, our contact information is listed up here at the top of the screen at 702-598-0000. We are open Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Of course, if you do need a further assistance with any issue that you do run into, we are more than happy to assist you. This is just designed to be a general training to allow you to get, gather more information on how exactly to log in to the employee portal itself. So first of all, of course, we want to make sure that you're on the correct website starting out. So advancedstaff.com is going to be the website that you'll want to access. Please make sure that you do spell it as it appears here. Sometimes um, there will be a little bit of a misspelling and that will, of course, lead you to a different website. So we want to make sure that you do, of course, spell that correctly. That'll be listed here for you for visual aid. Once you do go to the advancedstaff.com home screen, you'll be seeing all these details here. We do work hard to make sure that this is user friendly and easy to navigate and of course up to date. If there are any questions about any of the products that are available on here as well, please make sure to reach out to us once again. We're happy to help with any of that. Since this training is more designed for the employee side today, we're going to be going to this employee tab here on the navigation bar menu. Of course, we recommend that at any time you do want to navigate through the website, explore a little bit, all of the details on here are really useful for information, but since we are focusing more towards the employee portal side, we want to make sure that we are tackling that today. So once you click on employee and then employee portal, you'll be able to log into the employee self-service portal itself. So it'll redirect you to our um, login screen. It'll load with a triangle emblem here as well and then you'll be able to see the username and the password portion. As you see here, the username and password are already preloaded into this website. I'm using a demo employee in order to access the fields that would better assist anyone that would like to log in, but yours will of course reflect your username and password personally. In the case that you do forget your username or your password, we do have links available to you to be able to send those details to your email. Um, if you run into any issues with that, of course, again, we are here to help, but hopefully that's a smooth process as well. Most employees will not need to register because our system um, typically goes through a, a registration process when you do become an employee in our system. But if for whatever reason you do call in and we advise you that you are able to register or you, if you're told by a worksite manager to do so, that will be the tab that you'll click on there. Now let's say for um, demonstration purposes, you do have your username and password ready and handy. You'll then hit the login screen here. Now, once you do log in, it may ask you to um, send a code to either your email or via text message to um, authenticate the device that you're using. That is mainly just for security purposes to make sure that you are up to date with the devices that you're using and that we can identify that the device that you're using is safe. So that's very crucial, of course, to make sure that your information is protected. It shouldn't happen every single time you log in, but of course, we do want to make sure that any new device that you're using is registered as a safe device to use. Once that information is input into the system, if you do run across that, you'll then be directed to your dashboard screen. This is the home screen, of course, for you to navigate and be able to utilize anything that is available to you on your portal. You'll see here that up in the upper right hand corner, we do have the ability to change your password. Um, if you do want to update your information there, you are more than welcome to do so. It also has the logout option there. Then, of course, we have the navigation tabs here on the left-hand side of your screen. You'll be able to access personal information, including, uh, not limited to, of course, your personal information. Maybe you want to update emergency contacts, those types of details. And then below that, we have benefits, which will, of course, include the benefit enrollment tab. That's going to be extremely helpful for you come open enrollment season, which it will, you'll receive an email notification regarding, but that will be where you'll actually go in for the open enrollment um, Time frame. So that's really helpful to have access to. Then also, of course, under pay, we have pay history as well as direct deposit. Those are the two most often used tabs that we have under this um, specific criteria. With the pay history, that will have all of your paycheck subs and you'll be able to narrow them down by field. And then direct deposit, you can actually put in your direct deposit information, if applicable for your company, under that tab there as well. PTO, if that's something that's available to you, you will be able to access under your portal as well. And then just a few more details here, along with your tax document. 
let's just go over the basic information that most employees do have questions about when logging in. Most of the time when employees do call in, they would like to know information about direct deposit. So I'll be going to my um, navigation tab here on the left-hand side, going to pay, and then direct deposit, which will be right here, that third option down. Once you click on that, you'll be able to load in the ability to put in the routing and account number for your. Once you click on the direct deposit tab there, you'll be able to actually see if there are any active bank accounts on file. Of course, since, since this is a demo employee, there are no active accounts, so it will say no data to show. That's how you'll know that there's no direct deposit information on file. But if you'd like to add an account, you'll actually go over here to the right hand side of your screen and you'll be able to hit add account. And that's where you'll put in your details. So routing, bank name, account type, account number. Make sure you confirm that account number as well. And then also under settings, you have the ability to customize the amounts that you have direct deposited into that account. This is where we run into the most questions that employees have about direct deposit itself. Under deposit method, we do have quite a few options for you. We have fixed, percent, and remainder. These are all different, of course, because we can um, customize the direct deposit amounts that you'd like to have. So for fixed, for example, if you have more than one account listed and you want to have maybe $50 go into a specific bank account, you can select fixed, and then it will allow you to put in the amount itself. So you'll be able to put in the $50 amount and then you'll be able to hit add once you have all of the other details there. Since, of course, I have not put in those details, it's not allowing me to move forward, which you can see with that little red circle that's indicating to me that I have not filled out that field correctly. But that's just an example. For percent, this is one that we run into quite often. As you can see, since I didn't remove the field previously, it does have 50% listed right now. If you want your full check to go into your account, you can do 100%. That's an option that many employees like to utilize there. You can also utilize the maximum feature. So if you have more than one account listed, but you don't want any more than, let's say, $200 going into that account, you can put a cap on the amount that you have in that account, or from one check, I should say. If you'd like to do any type of other percentage, we can do 2%, you can do 20%. You just make sure that the percentages reflect exactly what you'd like to have listed there. Then for remainder, this is the easiest option for those that are, are just listing one account in your direct deposit information. Remainder means the, um, the full check basically, or the remainder of the check that's listed. So if let's say an employee wanted to do $50, like I mentioned previously with the fixed amount, and you didn't know exactly how much you're going to get paid from check to check, you're not a salaried employee, you can actually select the remainder option to have the remainder of your check go into the account that you're listing above here. And then that, of course, that would be something that you'd be able to input into our system. Something important to know about direct deposit is that the um, pre-notification period where we verify that we can actually deposit into the account that you listed can take up to 7 and 10 business days. So if you do submit that information on a Tuesday that week and you're getting paid the Friday of the same week, it may not process in time and you may receive some sort of other form of payment as in a paper check, for example. But of course, we always recommend that if you have any questions about that, you call into our office directly and we can assist you in whatever means that we absolutely can. Another important note about direct deposit is that if you want to remove another account, if you go back, if we hit cancel here, if I had another account listed under the direct deposit options here, I can actually remove accounts and delete them. And then that notification is sent directly to us here at Advanced Staff, where we know that we will no longer be utilizing that account. It's something that's done automatically. We make sure that that's done fairly quickly. Of course, if you run into any account issues, as in you're no longer utilizing that account, you'd want to go in here and remove that information right away. Another thing that many employees call in about is the pay history feature here under pay. So pay history will show you all of the paychecks that you've had in the previous year, or you can actually select all the way back throughout the entire time of your employment. This demo employee has quite a few years back that they can go, but of course, if you wanted to say go to 2018 for check stubs, you'll be able to access them through the pay history tab as well. Since this is a demo employee, once again, that those details are not going to be listed because we do not have them active on payroll. But when you go to access your employee self-service portal yourself, you'll be able to see those details listed here.
All right, and then one last thing I wanted to show is the taxes feature. So under taxes and then W2, you can actually see an updated version of whatever W2 that you have. So under here, this is um, something that we run into quite frequently during tax season. Many employees do have questions about this. Um, you, once you go to W2, you'll be brought to this screen here. It says right here that you are not currently enrolled to receive an early electronic W-2, and then you'd want to select that um, below to enroll. So this is just basically stating that you'd like to have access right here, this checked box. This is selecting that you'd like to have access to the W-2 digitally rather than receiving it via mail. Utilizing ESS to download your W-2s, you can download them as many times as you'd like and give them to as many agencies as you'd like. So, of course, your tax professional, if you'd like to up upload it to an online tax filing service, whatever you prefer, or, of course, have that for your own records, as we always recommend. You can um, click on Select One where it is here, and then you can select the year, typically. Since, again, this is a demo employee, you will not have active W-2s listed, but for yourself, once you do have a full year and go through tax season under advanced staff's payroll, you'll be able to access that W-2 here and then hit the download button. It's not allowing me to click that, of course, because there is not one selected, but this is where you'd click that option there. That form will download as a PDF document, and so you can save that in whatever way you'd like. And then, of course, if you need to email it or save it to your desktop, whatever way you'd like to access that document frequently, you'll be able to do so. All right, and that about sums up your details on your employee self-service portal. Of course, if you run into anything where you have additional questions you'd like additional um, assistance with, we are more than happy to help here at Advanced Staff HR. Please reach out to us again at our um, at your earliest convenience. Our phone number is the 702-598-0000. And of course, we are here to help you Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Or, of course, you can email us at support at advancedstaff.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to engage in this training today. We hope that you found it useful and also full of information. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.